guys welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here today we're going to be taking a look at a very interesting recent launch from the brand revolution hair care and if you are familiar with revolution beauty then you will know that they are basically an affordable copycat brand so they take very popular products in the makeup skincare and hair care space and attempt to create dupes of them for a significantly reduced price and the reason why this particular dupe is especially interesting to me is because it's supposed to be a dupe for K18. This is called the Revolution Hair R Peptide Leave-In Restore Mask, and while the brand doesn't explicitly say that they're trying to dupe K18, because I think they'd actually get sued if they did that, it's very clear that that's what they're trying to do here based on the packaging, on the type of product that this is, and the way that they describe the product. This is only about 14 US dollars, which is significantly less expensive than K18 at $75. So if this was actually a dupe, that would be pretty pretty insane. But obviously, we have a lot to discuss before we can come to that final conclusion of whether or not this is truly a dupe for K18. So let's jump on into it. Let's start off by talking about what this product is claimed to do and how it's supposed to benefit the hair. I'm going to set this down and not do the awkward YouTuber thing where I just sit here and hold the product in the air the entire time. Our peptide 4x4 is a unique peptide blend to instantly repair signs of damaged hair with four key benefits. Number one, it's clinically proven to repair signs of damaged hair. Number two, it reduces signs of breakage in the appearance of split ends. Number three, it restores, strengthens, and softens. And number four, it protects against bleaching and heat styling. What I find very interesting in the way that that is described, this is just my marketing brain working, is that they're really intentional with the verbiage that they use. So they don't say it's going to reduce breakage and split ends. It's going to reduce signs of breakage and the appearance of split ends. And same for what they say about damaged hair, repair signs of damaged hair. Huh. But then they go on to say that this leave-in treatment mask works wonders for bleach slash damaged hair. It's just like such an unprofessional way to market a product by just putting that sentence there. Is that just me? Use after shampooing, no conditioner required. Conditioners can include silicones and can give a coating to the hair. And our peptide 4x4 is a leave-in treatment mask, so it will work best if able to penetrate into the hair cuticle and remain in the hair. Can oh. And they're saying, and this is not a sentence. Okay, so basically what they were trying to say there is that you want to use it after shampooing so that it can actually penetrate the hair and it's not, you know, unable to do so because of conditioner interfering. And then the second part of this is that they're saying that this product remains in the hair and continues to work in between washes. They have some asterisks throughout this to kind of disclaim their statements. So their clinical study is based on a consumer trial of 117 participants with bleach slash damaged slash dry hair. And in terms of this continuing to work in between washes, they say it's clinically proven up to three washes. Unless I am missing it, I don't see a link to that clinical study anywhere on this product page. So I can't actually look into the contents of that study or how it was conducted or or the participants or anything like that. That to me isn't a super persuasive argument or data point when they don't share any other details about that clinical study, just given the type of product that this is. When you read through the product description on K18's website, it's clear that the brand is also trying to be intentional with the verbiage that they use, but not in the same kind of sneaky way as Revolution. They say that this product is clinically proven to repair damage from bleach, color, and chemical services with immediate and lasting results to restore strength, softness, smoothness, and bounce to hair. So K18 explicitly says that their product will reverse damage, whereas Revolution is not saying that. And then of course, the other main way that it's a dead giveaway that this is supposed to be a K18 dupe is just through the use of peptides. So this is literally called are peptide. And on their website, the key set of ingredients that they call out are peptides. They say it's a group of ingredients which boost collagen and elastin for firmness, hydration, and brightness. In the skin, yes. Those are skin benefits, not hair benefits. 
K18 is also a peptide based treatment, but instead of calling out the fact that they include peptides just generally to help to benefit the hair, they actually talk about the fact that they specifically created and trademarked a peptide for the specific purpose of repairing damaged hair. So they say that the K18 peptide is a biotech developed peptide that mimics hair structure to reverse damage by reconnecting polypeptide chains and disulfide bonds broken during bleaching, color, and chemical service. Services. Are we seeing the difference just even high level and how these products are marketed? I know I am. So when I look at ingredients in products like this, I go about it very differently than I would a conditioner or a hair mask, which has the intention of conditioning the hair, not necessarily repairing the hair. So keep that in mind as we take a look at the ingredients in the R peptide. R peptide four by four. I'm sorry, I just think that that's such a goofy name. Just reminds me of like a piece of wood. When I look at this ingredients list, the first thing that I notice is that it's significantly longer than K18. So that tells me that they're likely not actually trying to dupe the ingredients in K18 exactly, but more so create something that gives a similar effect. That is just my theory upon the initial observation. Let's start off by taking a look at peptides, given that that is what they say is the magic behind this product, what allows it to work wonders on your hair. The only peptide in this product is copper tripeptide 34. You guys know I love copper peptides for the skin. While copper peptides have been clearly proven to benefit the skin, there's not nearly the same amount of information out there about the benefits that copper peptides may have for the hair. There are a couple studies suggesting that copper peptides can affect hair growth and stimulate hair growth, but when you're applying a product like this Revolution Mask, you're applying it to the lengths and ends of your hair. It's not a leave-on scalp treatment, so that's not going to help your hair grow. Nothing you apply to the lengths and ends of your hair is going to have anything to do with your rate of hair growth. And again, other than that, there are no other peptides in this product, interestingly enough, given that that is really what they're trying to highlight. What this product does have is a laundry list of amino acids, including things like arginine, aspartic acid, glycine, alanine, serine, valine, et cetera. So really it's not a bunch of peptides, it's a bunch of amino acids, but that's not necessarily something that is exclusive to revolution. I've seen a lot of other brands use the words amino acids and peptides and even protein interchangeably in their product descriptions. But the truth is that they are not the exact same thing because they're actually building blocks of one another. So amino acids are the building blocks of polypeptides and polypeptides are the building blocks of protein. And all of that that I just described, amino acids to polypeptides to protein slash keratin, that is what makes up our hair. That's what makes up the strength of our hair. So that's why a lot of brands like to utilize ingredients like that in their hair care products because that's what our hair is made up of. But unfortunately, as is the case with many, many hair care ingredients, there's just not really a ton of information to definitively prove that when you topically apply amino acids or peptides in a product like this one, that they can actually help to repair the hair. So this isn't one of those situations where I could look at the ingredients list and be like, oh, amino acids? Well, that's not going to benefit your hair at all because it probably will benefit your hair. It's just that we don't know the extent to which this will benefit the hair, especially when it comes to actually repairing damage. So it's just something we take with a grain of salt is all. What I actually find most interesting about this product is the fact that it contains maleic acid towards the very top of the label. If that ingredient were added at the very bottom of the label, then that would be something that would serve as a buffering agent in a product. But when I see something like that at the very top, I'm like, Oh, so that's actually what's going on here. Something a lot of people don't realize is that maleic acid is actually one of the main components of Olaplex. I actually found this super old post on Olaplex's Facebook page from 2015 with a letter from Dean Cristal, who is somebody that has emailed me personally if you remember that video. And in this letter, he says a few months ago, again, keep in mind, this was in 2015, so not talking about this product. I don't know what this product would have even been, but it says that Dean was given an ingredient deck for an Olaplex knockoff product 
that included maleic acid as the primary ingredient. Then he goes on to say that this brand compared their knockoff product to Olaplex, painting a poor picture of Olaplex while at the same time using basically the same chemical technology. Dean says it just didn't seem professional. He was shocked. Maleic acid is a component of Olaplex's unique chemistry. Olaplex also filed patent applications to the use of maleic acid in similar products. Unfortunately, we as consumers are not privy to the information of what else is included in that Olaplex formulation aside from maleic acid, but clearly based on this letter from Dean Cristal, who was the former CEO of Olaplex, Back in 2005, maleic acid is an essential component to that product. So really it's more like this is a potential Olaplex dupe with other ingredients thrown in like a peptide to make it seem like it's a dupe for K18 because K18 doesn't contain maleic acid at all. So this is all super interesting to someone like me who is obsessed with hair care and looking into the science behind it and ingredients. Aside from maleic acid, the amino acids, copper tripeptide, there are modified silicones in this as well. And modified silicones are beneficial for damaged hair because they adhere to the negative charge of that hair and help to protect it. So this is absolutely a product that contains beneficial beneficial ingredients for damaged hair. It's not one of those that pretends to be bond building when it really doesn't have the potential to do that. I'm impressed looking at the ingredients. Is this set of ingredients a dupe for K18? I don't think so. You just heard my thoughts on why. All right, we are finally ready to talk about my experience using the R Peptide 4x4 mask. So I was able to test this out two times before sitting down to film this video today. I know that that's not an extensive amount of time, but to be totally honest, I don't have plans to use this for like six plus weeks. I would rather test out other products and I'll get into that more at the end, but this is just not a brand that I wanna give a ton of promotion to. But at the very least, I wanted to test it out so that I could give you guys a review because I know a lot of people are really curious about this product. So in using this two times, each time I only shampooed my hair. I didn't apply a conditioner, a hair mask, a leave-in conditioner, anything else. And I was super nervous about that because that is what I initially did with K18 before they came out and said that you can actually apply conditioner after. And that experience was not the best for my hair. I have hair that is really susceptible to tangling, which then makes it more susceptible to breakage. So I was super nervous to do that with this, but I felt like that was the only way to give it a fair review. When I first squeezed this out of the bottle, I was very thrown off because I was expecting this to have a really similar consistency to K18, but it doesn't at all. It's significantly thicker and more of like a leave-in cream versus K18, which is super, super lightweight and does not really condition my hair whatsoever. However. So with the K18 mask, I use four pumps of that product in my entire head of hair. Four pumps of the R peptide product would be way too much for me though. So I only used two pumps, which ended up being the perfect amount. And I applied it in the exact same way that I do K18, where I separated my hair into two sections, did one pump on one side of my head, rubbed it between my hands, scrunched it up into my hair, and then did the exact same thing with another pump on the other side for again, two pumps total. Then I went ahead and styled my hair as normal. I didn't apply any additional products on top of this because I wanted to again, give this a fair review, but also because this is something that does have added heat protection. So I didn't need to apply heat protection on top of it. And I will be totally honest, cause I have to be totally honest always with you guys. This did make my hair feel really, really good. I feel like it's kind of difficult to describe a product that just makes your hair feel healthier and like pinpoint exactly why your hair feels healthier, but this is one of those products for me. My hair definitely felt soft and smooth and silky. And again, I have to be honest, I really enjoyed the way that my hair felt after using this. Because I only used this two times, I feel like I can't fairly speak to damage repair here because that's definitely not enough time to see a significant improvement or a noticeable change in levels of damage. But in just using it two times, I definitely was really enjoying the way that my hair felt. And that's definitely a key differentiator between K18 because K18 is not one of those products that immediately makes my hair feel super soft and silky and smooth. It's one of those products that with extended use and with time, makes my hair feel significantly healthier. You know, I feel like there's definitely a difference between immediate results and lasting results. And for me, 
I don't think I felt immediate results with just two uses of K18. I'd have to go back and check my video, but I definitely did with this product. So do I think that this product has the potential to restore damaged hair, make it look and feel healthier? Absolutely. Do I think it has the potential to repair damaged hair? I would say likely yes, based on the inclusion of malaic acid, but is this a product that I can fully give my stamp of approval and recommend with my whole heart? No. I just have a really hard time supporting a brand that has a business model solely based on ripping off other brands. I just don't think that's right. I don't think that is an honorable way to build a business. And it's a shame because they're able to create some amazing products at very affordable prices. And I wish that they would just let those products speak for themselves without clearly trying to copy other products. Because if they did that, this would be a brand I'd be so excited about. I'd be like, you guys, how is this possible? They're creating such affordable products with amazing ingredients that give great results. Like this is unheard of. That is something that I think could speak for itself in the hair care space because we don't really ever see something like that. But unfortunately, that is not the case. And they continue to just be out here stealing ideas from other brands. So that's why this is not going to be a product that I actively recommend after this video. But again, I know so many of you were curious about it and wanted me to review it. So I wanted to do that for you guys. And I know that there are several of you out there that want to be able to buy effective, affordable hair care, even if it's not from the most reputable of brands in terms of like integrity. And you know what? That's totally fair. Everyone has to make a decision that works the best for them and their budget and to each their own. I'm not judging anybody. I just want you guys to know where I stand as a beauty creator. I feel like something like this is important for me to speak up on if it's something that I feel passionately about, and I do. So that's that on that. If you guys are curious to hear my thoughts on Revolution Bondplex, which is their system of products that is supposed to be a dupe for Olaplex. I am going to list and link a review that I posted on that line a little over a year ago. But if not, thank you for hanging out with me here today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this something that you want to purchase? Do you have the same thoughts that I do about this brand just being kind of shady? If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. Elsie. Oh, my big sweet girl. You're getting so big. Did I just interrupt your nap? I'm so sorry. Do you have anything you'd like to add? I agree. Bye, guys.